So, we have a bit of an interesting situation happening at the shop. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, we have you apprenticing, kind of. Kind of, sort of. Which yeah. is which is Half apprenticing. Which is something I was talking, like, me and Allie were talking about this. Like, you being an apprentice, is, it's like you are, but you aren't. I know. Right? Like, because you are in some ways, yeah. but in other ways not. And you have a natural leg up because you've been hanging around the place for so long. Well, plus I've been doing the one thing for two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've been doing r- r- the black and gray realistic thing for a long time. That's the only thing I've worked on. So it's like in regular line work, boring stuff, in my opinion, boring stuff. But the normal, like, kind of basic foundational tattoo stuff, I'm fairly new. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've been doing realism for a long time. And yeah. It's it's a strange thing. Like, I did it when I was out in Kelowna that uh, I did that soldier piece. Yeah. And then uh, I think that was probably your best piece yet. It was pretty that good. I've seen anyway. It was pretty good. I liked the fox more. I think it had more dynamism to it. It was just like more life. Um, I was really hoping to do like a King Leonidas on him, but whatever. It still came out really good. But like uh, the guy walked over to uh, to one of the artists, Gary, and Gary looked at it and he's like, "You're a resident now, not an apprentice." I was like, "It's as a joke, but like, yeah." You know, it was one of those, like, I know what I do, and I know what I do decently, and it's just not what I, all of what I did yesterday. So what do you rate your black and gray, and and all of black and gray? In all of black and gray? On a one, one to ten scale. Dude, there's so far to go. Yeah, See, of course. The, the problem with my scale is, like, it's not that it, like... It's not can't. linear? No, I think you and I understand the same scale, right? Like, the as you get up, it's harder and harder to get... Like, you know, yep. if you're going to be in a nine, a nine point one is really hard to get to. This is you what you were saying when you said every tattoo, you feel like you learned so much. Yeah. I was like, I think that will be true until a point. Yeah. And then you'll have a, you'll have a glass ceiling yep. that you'll have to really, really think outside the box yeah. and go, how can I get up another step? And a yes. lot of people get to that point and They're just like, ah, it's good enough. Yeah. I'm paying my no, bills. No, I'm never that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't wait till I'm at like an eight point five, and then can get to an eight point six, and then like, yeah, I can't wait till those I get last there. couple of well, not really the last couple of, but like the last like ten or twenty moves are like yeah. all like little incremental changes. Yeah, like that's you the, can have your big leaps, but then when you get near the near to the top, you're like, I'm really creaking up now. <laughs> well, and the only thing that's only important to me and other people like me. You know what yep. I mean? Like, it won't be necessarily, like, the difference between an 8.5 and, and an 8.6 8. doesn't really matter to the client. Right. You know it's I mean? like uh, like we were saying with Rick nerding out over the tiny details. Yeah. Right? And things that no one else would give no a, a single shit about. Yeah. Like, it'd be like, what you, oh, it's just the way I shaded this one thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, most people are just going to go, oh, that's a really that cool wolf. Cool. <laughs> nice wolf, man. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. No, I, so, for me, if I'm going to be brutally honest with myself, I'm like... Somewhere in a, depending on the piece for black and gray, I'd say like between six and a half and seven and a half if I'm really doing well. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I don't. Okay, this is so right now, it probably depends on the subject matter, even to some extent. Uh, subject matter, the reference, the person's skin. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily that I can just always be at a seven and a half. Um, because like there's just so many factors, and I have to see them healed. So right, your line work. My line works like a, it's uh, I don't know. Don't be afraid to go brutal on yourself. It depends on, <laughs> it's another thing of like, depending on the, the placement and depending yeah. on the person's skin and depending on the, like, you know, in a perfect scenario, my line work isn't that bad, mm-hmm. but in. There's like, so many variables. Yeah. And when I say that bad, I mean like a six. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because like. It's hard to rate it fairly, but there's a lot of people doing a lot of different levels of tattooing. Yeah. And for me, I'm rating it on a scale of me because there will be a, a, a time where my lines are like, yeah, I'm at an eight and they're just banging. But like for me, an eight is going to be really hard to get to because I've seen clean ass painted on lines that just look beautiful. And that that's like, that's pretty hard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I could get to where Terry is for line work, oh my god, I'd be so happy. Oh, it's, he's he. I think he's like circling this point where it's like he's been at this certain level of tattooing for a long time, and he's yeah. got mastery of that level. Yeah. But to get it farther than that is difficult for him because it's yeah. like there's no the scope of it is still fairly small. Yep. Yeah. And 
the the other problem is no real direction from what I've seen. Yeah. Like it's just kind of like an ad an, an everyman's tattoo, right? Like it doesn't have any real like um this is a Terry tattoo. Like yeah. it, it kind of feels like you could see the someone else doing the exact same one yeah that being said he's incredibly efficient and uh um his work looks good yes like it's just it's lacking that distinction yeah right like well he's he's done a lot of what i would consider to be i I always call it this which is like tattoo style Mm -hmm. you know i mean it's like you can't call it traditional you can't call it realism you can't call it um neo-traditional really it's like kind of tattoo style it's yeah. like there's lines, there's shading, there's stippling, there's black. There's it's kind of like this, uh, um, like modern tattooing version of stuff. So it's like there's there's dimension to it, um, but it wouldn't be heavily put in one category or the other. Yeah. And um, I think if he starts picking a style and putting that energy that way, then he'll be a fucking rocket. You know what I mean? Like when he's doing that. Um, He's got a black work kind of line style with bl- like black round yeah. sleeve that he's working on. I think that will probably be his lane. I think it's a good lane. Um, I think we have the reverse problem with Allie where it's like she's not wanting to be broad and she's yeah. wanting a specific style yeah. and she's pushing it too hard almost. Mm, like, maybe. Like I'm not saying it isn't working, but it's like it doesn't feel as organic as – what you're doing with the realism where you just kind of you would naturally like to go that way or yeah. she's trying to turn every piece into a specific style yeah that's fair like even that little uh that duck like it yeah. just became an alley piece yeah it had no real business being an alley piece it yeah. looked good yeah but like it could have been just a duck and a flower but she made yeah. it an alley piece right everything is kind of like coming she's got more of a style she's set on than terry does but i don't think overall she's hitting everything as well as terry no but i mean you know terry's a couple of years in you know for sure i think in so i i think for me what i saw ali do with that two-headed snake like that's probably her avenue yeah she's gonna keep going that way yeah and like which is in my opinion kind of unfortunate like she has a really good eye for realism like her portraiture is very good, um, but she has no idea how to tattoo that yet. I think it's also like, like the appeal of like neo trad mm-hmm. is strong. Like it's a really, yeah. it's a really it's such a loose window. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just like this broad definition of like neo trad. Yeah, and, but it's it's also got that hipster coolness oh, to yeah. it too, right? Yeah, it's, it's very like trendy. You're doing right neo trad tattoos. You're cool. You're yeah. a badass, right? Look at this hard ass snake. Like, yeah. like. I don't know, black and gray, I feel like it appeals to older people. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and, and more like kind of sedentary life where yeah. the the more cool crowd are doing the neo trad stuff. So I think it's almost like a way of showing off or like signaling. Well, I mean, one of the reasons that I am <clears throat> in the lane of realism is because like, A, I, I, like I'm just, I'm a big person of understanding who my clientele is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know the age demographic of what my style would appeal to. And um, I'm good with that. Look at the woman who came in for that owl. Yep. Right. Like this is the difference. A black and gray tattoo. It can be like a big memorial piece. Mm -hmm. Like it's got this big story behind it. You're going to do it over a few sessions. It's going to be this emotional thing. Yeah. Probably like therapy for the person. Right. Um, Versus I got this badass snake. Like I'm not saying there's no meaning behind Neo Trad always, but like, the, the reason you get a piece like that is a lot more glitz and glam than yeah for sure um, the a lot of times the black and gray has got like that sentimentality to it yeah it's yeah. a different culture well, behind each style you know the thing that that is my driving force in realism is like I like and you could do this in neo trad it's just more rare like neo trad has that thing which like there's not a uh, neo trad artist in Lethbridge that's doing large scale work. No. Like the ability to go like, oh yeah, you want your outer arm to be one concept. You know what I mean? Like where it's just this big ass piece. No one's doing that here. No. And when you're doing realism, that's kind of, or like black and gray realism for sure. The word sleeve is expected almost. Yep. You know what I mean? Like when, when, when you were asking about that owl memorial piece, it's like kind of assumed that she's going to do her whole arm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, 
whereas with the Neotrad mm. thing, it's like, okay, we're going to do peace, peace, peace. And which is like, in my opinion, one of the only thing that keeps it in the trad realm. Where it's just this like, okay, we're going to do pieces and we're going to have a bit of a hard time assembling them together um, because we're not thinking large scale. And for me, I love thinking large scale. Like the first, yeah. the first guy that came in here to do that Raven piece, my first thing was like, okay, yeah, this is cool, but what about the rest of you? Yeah, that's the way I always think. Yeah. And that, that uh, I mean, early on when I didn't have the money to do it, obviously it was piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So that, was that not just a youth thing, but also a financial thing, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Can't afford Completely. to get into these huge commitments when you're young. No. I think that also gates the uh, older people um, away from that style a little bit more because they have the money to think about like longer term and, yep. and bigger investments. But when you're young, you just want something cool on your arm that yep. you can show off, right? Of course. Look at this cool thing I got. And it's, you know, I think my first tattoo, it was right here. And a big part of that was like, I want it to be seen, mm -hmm. right? I want it to be out, out there. Um, I don't so much think that way anymore. As yeah. crazy as it sounds, I'm sitting here fully tattooed. Well, your well, biggest piece is your torso, which is covered by a shirt yeah. most of the time. Most people, like if I was in that that early 20s, late teens mentality of getting my first tattoo on my wrist, mm -hmm. I most certainly would have started my sleeves before my torso mm -hmm. on the blackout. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Like it would have been, of course I'm going to do white and black on black stuff on my arms first mm -hmm. because I want everyone to see it. Mm -hmm. Where right now we're sitting here and it barely looks like I have anything over my, like that could all just be a lie, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more content with working on that stuff the older I get, the less I care about showing it off. Yeah. And the more it just becomes like lifestyle or like something I legitimately, um, not that I wasn't into it before, but it's more for me than, than it's ever been. Yeah, of course. Right. Like, and, and if it appeals to other people, that's secondary. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's always more for me. And I think that, um, black and gray pieces and indeed my most valuable tattoos when I was getting, like old tattoos, they were always the black and gray ones because yeah. they were always like portraits or, or like really meaningful stuff or yeah. stuff that you cared a lot about. You thought oh, this is going to have a big price tag. So, you know, you want it to be more invested. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. And it's not to say that there's nothing like that. The other styles aren't great. Like I, as my line work develops, I want to get into some Neo trad things as well. But like for me, I'm going to keep that large scale concept. It's like Scott. I feel like he's always being seduced by the Neo Trad. Oh, for sure he is. <laughs> for sure he is. He can't get away from it. Yeah. He's a, he's a filthy slut for the stuff. He really is. <laughs> it's like, I think if he had like years of drawing it and just was like, it was second nature to him and it wasn't just like a huge time commitment. Like people don't understand how much it takes to get into like a good Neo Trad drawing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, because you're getting all your references first, so you're doing all the reference collection, which takes an hour to two hours at least, and then you're assembling the piece, and then you have to draw it. You have to do all of your line waiting. You have to figure out whether or not you're going to do color or not. Some guys that are really good at Neotrad will just leave everything and, and kind of do color on the day, but like, it's a time investment to make sure... Like You're doing four or five hours of work to do a piece that's going to take you two and yeah. a half to tattoo three to tattoo which is a weird thing because it's almost the reverse with black and gray mm -hmm. right where you won't have to do as much work on yeah. the, fr the, the front end more in the back end yeah. right like once you get into tattooing it well like with the with my consult there for the owl piece like we sat and looked at owls i yeah. picked out probably a half dozen owls maybe a little bit more and then picked out the flowers that you wanted and picked you know half dozen references of each while sitting in the consult yep took a photo of her arm and then it's going to take me probably an hour to get the, the everything in total, like set and ready for her arm. You know, of course, I mean? like it's it's more then, less about drawing and more about orchestration. Yeah, but it's going to take seven hours to tattoo, probably maybe a little bit more. Yep. By the time it's all said and done, because it's like you know the this one especially is going to be multiple sessions, layering tones, like just doing it right and. Uh, not just like, cause like I can't just bang out all the lines and throw in some color. Like it's just not going to be the same. I have to do everything really slow and uh, methodical and it is what it is. That's the, my preferred way. Like 
That's just, I like little details. I like taking my time with it. I don't want to feel rushed. That whole flash day, I feel rushed. Of course. Every yeah, fucking Of course. Piece, we, we hadn't cut that off. You were here till midnight oh, by the yeah. end of it. If they, if they, if they would have come back. Yeah. Like it was, it was getting excessive to the point where it's like, I'm looking at how fast you're setting up and tearing down and mm. I'm looking at how fast the tattoos are going and I'm like, okay, no more. Yeah. Right? Like this is the, the limit. Oh man, it's <laughs> like the hardest part for me is the the consistent setup and like the, I was an idiot and I didn't stencil ahead of time. Like that was so stupid. I could have saved myself so much work. It could have been like tear down while the cavity's sitting. I'd print off my sizes. Second savers. Like, oh my God, yep. yes. Yeah. It would have been way faster which stacked on each other become minute savers and yeah. even hour savers eventually oh, yeah. well each <laughs> each setup was like by the time all the stuff was said and done it probably averaged out to about 20 to 30 minutes mm-hmm. which is that's most of my day if i'm doing six tattoos that's three hours of my day is spent setting up that's why rick doesn't like it yeah it's like it's too much setup startup it's, it's just it's a nightmare by the time you get through all that shit you barely made anything yeah Especially if you're doing sixty dollar tattoos. Even Terry yesterday did like, I think he did like six tattoos, but they were all shop minimum. Everything he did was shop minimum. Yeah. So it's like, well, I basically did this. I just set up and tore down all day. Yeah, really. <laughs> I was tattooing for five minutes at a time. Well, and his is so much more efficient than mine is, just because of years of doing it. Like yeah, he's got repetition. that thing down. I was always curious as to why it took Allie so long to do that, because like her thing, it, she's way more like, kind of. Hers is on the 30 to 40 minute setup and tear down kind of thing. It's like she takes her time. But I get it. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's the least fun part of tattooing. Yeah. Set up and tear down. If I had someone doing it for me, it, it, you could fly through those things. Of course. But. So like someone not trained to tattoo who's just a professional setup tear down. Yeah. <laughs> Legit. You almost just pay them just to wander around and tear everyone's station down. I'm sure in big walk in street shops, yep, they probably they do. do have those people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and like, it depends as to how you want to do it. But like, if you have a little table like that, like what Terry has, you get a second table and you have someone setting it up. Oh yeah, yeah. You know I mean, yeah, that makes sense. You just do the changeovers like right, right away. And yeah, then, you're almost like dual wielding tables. Yeah, right. I've got one for the next one already ready to go. Well, this and one's like, getting clean while I'm working. Some shops, depending <laughs> on the style, like um, I remember when we had Alex here, um, he, when he was doing his London shop or whatever, he was doing trad tattoos mainly, and he said most of them were drawn on anyway. So mm-hmm. there was no stencil or anything. It was just like you set up, they sit down, he sharpies on them, and then goes. Oh. People without vision, though, they see that Sharpie and they're like, I don't know what this is going to be. Oh, dude. That's one of the biggest like annoyances <laughs> that I see with people that are inexperienced with tattoos. They're n- misunderstanding of Sharpie. Yeah. Like, that's like a... It, it's wild. Because I get it. I get it. It doesn't look like anything when you're when you're putting it on you. It looks it, like crazy. But like, you have to trust that like your tattooer is understanding what that, those all mean to him or her. The lack just, of vision is... Uh, astounding to yeah. me still yeah people if they they see a line drawn they don't know what it's going to mean one day yeah right they don't know what that's going to be in a year from now mm-hmm. right that's they can't make that first step because they're they don't understand that 30 steps later it's going to be this huge masterpiece mm-hmm. and uh that's like now we've got the white in here this week and like shit is really starting to look like something now, yeah right like it's not even because like it was i know i've been i've been a pro- huge proponent of the journey of this the whole time but like multiple points of this i've been kind of wondering if it was ever really going to be feasible mm. right like if like not to say that it wouldn't be good for a little while but like feasible long term mm-hmm. would this actually be a thing yeah. it's still on my mind right and then when you see Every step you take now, it gets a little better and a little better. This is this is the time you have to put into some things to get there, right? Now, mine is obviously longer than most, but yes. like most, my vision wouldn't have been good enough to allow me to make that first step at the beginning of this. Hmm. Like if you would have sold me, uh, we're going to do a year straight and at the end of the first year working on your torso, it's yeah. going to start really looking good. Yeah. But you're going to take... 50 sessions to get there. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. You can't sell that to someone who has no tattoos. No. That takes a long time for you to be like, oh, okay, I've seen this happen enough to know that how this 
uh, process works, right? Yeah. So like if you're the tat or a layman to tattooing and you see those lines there, you don't know what those are going to be one day. No. Like you don't have that trust. Yeah. Right. So that has to be developed, not just with an individual artist, but in yourself where yeah. it's like, I've seen enough projects finish that I know every step it takes. Well, like you've seen the email thread with Rick's client yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> have you seen me explaining what tattooing is? <laughs> Yeah, I've read like, through some of those. She's now in a place where she understands and just shows up and trusts, and it is what it is. Yeah, but she's got she's too forgiving almost. Yeah, <laughs> but that's like they're like what eight sessions in or something like that, probably. She's got another five right now. Still. Yeah, and it's one of those like she gets it now, but that's because she didn't understand before and it's like you, you, as you grow up in your understanding of tattooing yes, and, exactly. and, and healing and what everything looks like in your skin and um, the process of the particular artist and it's like you have to get through those types of uh, hurdles before you start understanding what tattooing is. That being said, there are people, Scott for example, who he doesn't want to play that game. No. Right, he refuses to almost to play that game where mm -hmm. it's like, I want to do a sleeve in one session though, yeah. because they want that. And mm -hmm. it's like, I want to try and pound out a sleeve every day. Yeah. Right. And it's like, out to what detriment though? Yeah. This is the one one of the reasons why I don't want to get into the sleeve with Scott. Mm. Like I I've thought about it a few times because yeah. like I like the idea of having a sudden progression. Right. Yeah. 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 Like all of a sudden you have a sleeve, but yeah. then it's like all of a sudden it heals out and it's not the way it was yeah right like because it's probably not going to age as well when it's put in in a rush well i mean no <laughs> like it can't again this is one of those things where i've seen enough tattoos healed um that when you take the process slow and you let the body deal with it a piece at a time and heal well and those types of things like the slow incremental build is for longevity's sake by far the best result. Yeah. Like now I, I will say there's some guys and gals out of Europe that are doing some things that I don't quite understand and I don't understand how they heal as well as they do. Like you got an example? Well, uh, Th Thomas Carly Yar Yarle Jarlie or Har Ar Yarlie. I think it's I call him Carly Jarly. I don't okay, really know. Carly Jarly. We'll go with that. But the dude does eight hour sits. Yeah eight hours and it's black and gray but with opaque gray full saturation lots of trauma and i don't understand how he can sit there for eight hours tattooing a client and have it heal perfectly perfectly almost every time and look amazing for years it's weird because like most artists will work with someone for a few times and then they understand their skin right mm -hmm. like so like you'll tattoo a guy a couple times and you're like, I think I got his skin figured out now, yeah. right? But if you're tattooing strangers every time... Yeah, it's an entirely <laughs> roll of the dice. Well, okay, So how so, do you control those variables at that point? I don't know if you can control them, but he's done some things in his booking <clears throat> process to try and mitigate some of that. So mm. he will only work with people with that have certain skin tone. Really? Yeah. That could be taken... Yeah. You know? Super wrong. <laughs> It's like, but he, but I understand why. But like, yeah, that seems it's bright, not even it's not even skin tone. It's almost like skin, um, like collagenness, elasticity, sure. or something like that. Almost skin health. Yeah, like there's a lot of these high end artist guys that are like, um, that's part of their preface of working with you. Someone who goes to book him. No, 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 your skin looks like leather. Fuck off, you're out. Pretty you're well. done. Take him away. I mean, yeah, because like, <laughs> or or you have to put it in an area that isn't sun beaten or whatever. You yeah. Know what I mean, because it, it's one of those things that it's just restrictive for the artist in terms of what they can possibly achieve. And his compositions deal in every tonal value. So if your skin can't handle that tonal value or can't, like, obviously can't take, because if you get to a place where you're running out of collagen, your skin gets really red yesterday. Like the guy that I tattooed in the morning um he's got red hair and his skin is super fair and his skin got red yeah so i'm just flying blind and if i were this carly jarlie guy that would be impossible to do real light subtlety 
and have it happen all in one go and see where everything is. You know what I mean? So you don't think he's developed a plan for that? He's just avoiding the problem. He probably has a plan for that, but it won't be an eight-hour sit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it will be a different approach. And I just think he's at a level where he doesn't want to do that different approach. He would prefer to do it this way. Well, especially if you've got... It's like doing Rick's books for the last few weeks. Unless it's something... I really think he's going to like. There's no way I'm even going to schedule it. Yep. He's got enough stuff ongoing yeah, well, yeah. that will Why just naturally keep going. Yep, 100%. It's like he's almost I'm almost not booking him, but yep. he's still booking up anyway. Yeah. Because he just has all those projects happening. So yep. like with when you get to that level where you have that level of renown and people know your work and they want your work, you don't really have to say yes to anything you don't want to no. do. No. Ever again. Yeah. Right, like you can just turn down things. Mm -hmm. Um, That being said, I think that uh, if you get into that habit, you become you can probably become a little uh, a little weaker for it too, right? Because you it's like spoiled, right? Like now I don't have to do the things that I never liked, and yeah. So you probably just lean into your strong suits and and avoid all your weak suits. The funny thing, well, yeah, especially when it's getting you a lot of money. Yep. Um, There was a. To equate this to music, I remember listening to this uh, guy who was like a high-level mixer, um, as in he like mixes records and things yep. like that. And he was like cold plays mixer, and he's done all the biggest hits kind of thing. And he said that as soon as he got known for a style, he wouldn't take it on again. That's pretty wise. So as soon as he became the cold play guy, he stopped doing that genre. Yeah. Like right now, I think he's doing like afro-cuban music or something like that it's just like he's got this narrow field and he's just like he doesn't want to be pigeonholed into like this is how you are and as soon as someone starts doing that and they get he's just known as that guy he stops taking on those things and like it doesn't mean he won't come back around to it but it's yeah. like now all of a sudden you're na- you're he doesn't want to narrowly. be uh, daniel radcliffe as yeah. harry potter <laughs> yeah legit yeah <laughs> I mean, it was an old, like, uh, there was a bass player, Jacko Pistorius, that was the same. Like, he got known for a certain thing, and then all of a sudden, people were hiring him for that, so he refused to do it. I mean, you see that on those huge scales, but you also see it even in small scales, like like cooking, for me. Like, there are guys who are married to a station. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, my buddy Vince, he only ever wants to do one thing, mm. right? And I tell him all the time, you do this one thing. And then there's going to be a day when you're alone and you have to do Everything. all the things and you're going to figure out how weak you are on yeah. all these other things. Yeah. And you're going to be like, fuck, I wish I had a practice down there. Like me and line work. <laughs> Seriously, it happens. It happened all the time where I worked, where it was yeah. like you would have guys who really wanted to work a certain station and it'd be like someone else they're working with wants to work that same station and mm-hmm. they're both say they're both egg guys and now one of them has to do something else yeah. and it's like well i don't normally do this and so the product suffers and they have a bad time and there's an ego clash and it's like because they both want to do the one thing right yeah. where i was i was really good at all of it and i'd done an, i'd done it all long enough to be good at everything and so i didn't really care where i was anymore mm-hmm. it wasn't all that important to me yeah um and i liked that being able to do anything yeah, i needed to and so then when I was alone, it was very yeah, easy. easy. Yeah. Yeah. You've got your uh, <clears throat> time in to the yeah. areas that you would need to, right? And I'm always just worried about being too one note, mm-hmm. too particular, because then it's like, okay, I can do this one thing. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's part of what I worry about in terms of like um, starting to facilitate the black and gray end of this shop. Which we will definitely need you to. Yeah. Because Rick is, for the most part, seemingly sick of it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, which it. is hilarious because since we're talking about people who were in one lane and then they changed, like that was what he was known for at one point. Yeah. He was the black and gray guy. Where yeah. do you go to get a nice portrait? You got yeah, go to gotta go to Rick. Right. And like, no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> he would love to still do portraits. Yeah. Portraiture for him, he's a big fan. Um, it's the highest, uh, in his regard, it's the highest form of black and gray, in my opinion. Like very accurate replication. You know what I mean? Like that's that's because like with stressing out over that cat thing the other day. Oh yeah! Like he was like he was in. You could see the stress coming off of him. Like this has to be perfect. Yeah. Like he was putting himself under pressure over it. Yeah. He's up there just like, oh, like stressing at the computer trying to put this together. And yeah, at the same when, time, I think he he got thrown a curveball. That's anytime oh, you change sure. something on Rick, 
He's like, <laughs> he's kind of frazzled. You know what I mean? If he but goes like in the amount a, of carry he had for that piece. Oh, hundred percent. And you, you don't, but you don't think of that with him where it's like, usually just like, yeah, fuck whatever. But with, when it comes to animal portraits, I've seen anyway, he really, really gets involved in them. Animal he really wanted her to like portraits. that thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, he not, <laughs> not just like it. He wants her to love that. Yeah. Because like, again, it's like, I think as much as he doesn't want to admit it, I think he's a fairly emotionally in tune person in terms of those types of things. And it, when it comes to an emotional thing like that, like a yeah. portraiture of an animal or a portraiture of a loved one or something like that. Like, I think he actually really connects to that. Like well, when he had that consult with that lady who, uh, it's a portrait for her grandson who passed away. Yeah. Like that was the most kind, caring I've ever seen Rick. Yeah. It's weird. I, like he asked me to move his afternoon appointment that day with the cat thing. And yeah. I thought, Oh, Rick just wants to go fucking get drunk after this. Yeah. But like he was still here till four that day. Yep. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with that. No. He spent the entire morning putting that together, mm -hmm. and then he tattooed it for like three and a half hours. Yeah. And there, he only charged the woman for like two and a half hours. Yeah. So like, for him, it's all emotion. It has to be. There's, yeah. He tattooed that bum we were talking about earlier for 45 minutes. It'll be two hours today, but, yeah. but he was a fucking grease ball, right? Well, and he wasted his time. That was a big problem. That's always like disrespect. It's all emotion with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? It wouldn't seem like it. No, because like, Again, you're like uh, there's a number of there's tattooers that care about money and there's tattooers that care about tattooing. Yeah, I don't think he cares about the money he as long as he money. has enough. He doesn't care about money as long as his as long as he can do whatever he wants to do. He doesn't care about money at yeah. all, like at all. Yeah, and, you can uh, tell. Yeah, but I mean, like Lee's the same. Mm -hmm. Like Lee likes the fact that money can get him to do things and have experiences and have his people around and things like that. Like the things that money gets, but it's like money has no value to him. I think for him, as long as he's at a point where he has enough money to pretty well do what he needs to with yeah. it whenever he wants, yeah. he's not concerned with how much that no, number course. is. No. And that's where like for him, this, the way that he's running that Kelowna shop is like, I think really great for him. Like him, like I think it's really um, like a piece of his soul is getting satisfied by the way he's running that shop. Mm. Like it's this very loving, nurturing, high performing. It's changed him. Oh, yeah. yeah it's softened yeah. him. Yeah. Well, I think he's like walking in a way that he's supposed to. Like as a human being, like that is ha that is a, um, a way that he is supposed to. It's like I feel like there's kind of like a way that we're built and... Um, each individual kind of has to figure out what that is for them. And then you'll feel the most peace when you're as close to what that is. You know what I mean? And I think for him, this building, A, building shops, but building people, building artists, like building He's always family. been a big coach type guy, yeah. right? Like, Yeah, he loves that. Like, yeah. And that's one of those things where it's like, one of the reasons I went out there is just to watch him with his people and like, see how he interacts and how he builds because he's building people that will build more people. Yeah, building leaders. Yeah, he really Great is. leaders don't build followers, they build yeah. more leaders. Yeah. That's the idea. Like he's got three already there that are strong leaders that will be able to push other people forward. Yeah. And like that's one of the things that I want to try and be here. I might not be the highest skilled yet, but in terms of like attitude and work and drive and stuff like that, like I want to be able to be... Um, constantly pushing myself and constantly pushing everybody around me it's a weird thing for me uh now i've been here i guess a month already yeah it's been damn a, close. pretty well a month yeah. um i don't feel so there are things that i miss about my lifestyle but i think some of that is stockholm yeah. honestly and i'm not even trying to make a joke i think no. there's there's nostalgic like kind of like stress attachment and yeah. and like um the immediacy well, also like what, like loving your abuser kind of yeah, thing, right? Yeah, for like, sure. Not to say that my work was my abuser because it was Kinda definitely was at times, but like sure. it wasn't parasitic because no. it was paying me, right? Like it was paying me, <laughs> but like what I'm what I'm getting at is like there's I know that the feelings I have m missing that place are yeah. like mostly unhealthy. Sure. So when I feel those ways, it's kind of like yeah, but that wasn't good. Yeah. And when I go back there the one day a week. I feel like this is not good. I can't believe I did this for as long as I did. Okay, so 
Um, I think one of the things that we as a society have always have, have done for a long time that probably needs to get undone is that we equate the holistic work environment to a dollar figure, right? So one of the things that you have to look at within a job is like the, they're giving you money and you are making them money. Yeah. That's one, right? That's yeah. one aspect of a job. The problem is, is that when it comes to the employee employer, the employee goes, all of the employer things are a part of them giving me money. And that's not the transaction. The transaction is they're going to give you money for the money that you make them, right? And that number has to make sense to both of you. Everything after that is separate in their own equations. So it's like if, but we tend to look at it like, oh, the employee employment avenue all comes with this. And the thing that I value in all of that is just the money. But if you were to say the money is a wash and you're no longer making the money, they're no longer giving you money, none of the other stuff would be justifiable. Mm. So for me, it's one of those, like with a modern work environment, as we progress forward, I would think that if, if it is costing you in certain areas, they have to be making up that cost in other areas. So if it's like, if you have a stressful work environment, they have to be giving you avenues of de-stressing. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. So for me, it wasn't stressful anymore, which is well, you're not, too skilled, which is too skilled for sure, but also too calloused. Sure. Right. That's because, a part of skill, I think. Sure. I, I absolutely agree. But um, when I go there now, um, I see like no one's get no one will get into it with me because everybody's happy to see me when I'm there. Yeah, Even course. the people who weren't when I was there, who oh, wouldn't be if I went breath back. Breath of fresh air, I'm sure. Right. Who wouldn't be happy if I was back there. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Like if I was there again, say this whole thing falls through and I'm there again, mm-hmm. like those old tendencies come back, right? Like they, they might even be worse than they were. Yeah, sure. And and then there's there's uh, regret and remorse and all kinds of like shame that I'll have. But when I'm in there now, the people who disliked me are seemingly happy to see me because, again, fresh uh, breath of fresh air, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I see them bickering amongst each other and the latent tension and animosity mm-hmm. in the building. Yeah. Like, just, it, it's in there. Like, oh, you, yeah. can, it's, you can feel it. It's heavy. It's thick. And it's like, I was just so callous to it, and yet I, I knew it existed, but I couldn't feel it the way I can now. Right. Where I'm in here, I don't really feel that way. No. And I keep waiting for something like what would happen there every mm. day to happen here, and it's not happening. Yeah. Like this, and I don't mean the rush. I love the work. The work was great. Just the stress and the anxiety of the people who were running at nine the yeah. whole day. Like everyone is at nine and ready to fight with each other. All day long. Well, you saw a modicum of what, <laughs> like, so one of the, one of the reasons that I was interested in how you were reacting to the the little dynamic that was happening between Ali and I, is because like it, it's interesting. I think you were thinking that it was going to be some sort of category. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely have that defensiveness, yeah. right? So like yesterday, I did that boo, and that was probably the nicest lines I'd pulled in a perfect shape. And Ali comes over to me, and she was just like, "Dude, I'm so stoked for you. I'm so proud of you. That looks so great." Yeah, And it, it was just one of those, like, that's, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of going to be, there's going to be these ebbs and flows or whatever. <laughs> but, like, we are really, the three of us are going to be a state of trying to build each other. And there's going to be growing pains and discomfort and things like that. But it probably won't devolve into that. Yeah, I see. And uh, my years and years of that happening every day yeah. naturally leads me to think that those things are going to happen eventually. Yeah, of course, Watch you're out waiting for, for cataclysm. <laughs> like the- Almost like a boxer, right? Where it's yeah. like you're, you know, you've been hit in the face so many times. You, you know, you flinch when someone comes near you or something. So this work environment <laughs> is an interesting one because the cataclysms don't happen here, but they happen here. And they're mostly the cataclysms that happen. I'm going to keep saying cataclysms. They're mostly real world things. Yeah. So when something hits you in your regular life that's outside of this place, we are very like understanding of that. Oh, that's, you know I mean? yeah. So where I'm coming from, it's like, who fucking cares? Yeah. Work harder. Yeah, no, right? that's, like, not, that's not here. Uh, and like if something does happen, you'll almost never know. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're one of the people that's keeping that place running, it doesn't fucking matter what's happening in your yeah. personal life. And if you're not one of the people who's running, then it then it runs your whole life. So there were yeah. cooks that if something bad was happening in their personal life, you knew it. 
Yeah. Right. Because they wore it. Right. Mm. And to some degree, dealing with tattoo artists is a little like dealing with cooks. Very I've always, similar, I would say. Yeah. I've always said this. It's almost like a transient kind of lifestyle where it's in and out. Right. But but it's less stressed. Yes. Like this is less stressed. Yeah. This is like like what I was used to with cooks but without the stress i guess dealing mm-hmm. with pirates to some degree yeah right who can more or less make their own rules mm-hmm. i've always said i've met the most interesting people i've ever met at work because no one normal would stay in that that job I for long doubt it. right i wouldn't doubt that at all <laughs> if you ever see anyone who's normal normal yeah. they probably are a secret serial killer right <laughs> like they've got something wrong with them and it'll yeah. it's only a matter of time before you figure out what it is yeah because there's no reason we'll why chip away at this eventually and, and my thing was always the way i looked right mm-hmm. like it was always like well i make it more money than i'm worth doing this in my in my opinion at the time now i don't really feel that way now because I, I equate yeah. my value there to w- what i gave them um was well worth way more than them forgiving the way i looked Oh yes, right. Like so. So if you're like an average uh, tattoo consumer, and you're looking at three, three people that are all kind of circling a similar level of work, like I, I could probably tell the difference and divvy it up amongst the three of them. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we've already gone over the fact that you're going to be moving towards more of what Scott's doing anyway. Mm-hmm. So that'll kind of keep you safe from that a little bit because we're going to need that guy anyway. Yep. We're going to need that guy more than you're ready to be or even wanting to be that guy. This place is known for that kind of work. That's okay with so, me. So like, sure, sure, that's okay. But like, if you weren't here, we'd really be needing to push for someone to bring in. Yes. Like, we need that. Or you'd be it, pushing Terry Hart into that room. Sure, it's indifferent. It's it's not an insult to you, but it's indifferent to your interest in it. It yeah. needs to happen. It's one of the reasons that I pushed for it. <laughs> it has to happen. So you're going to be, to some degree, safe from what I'm talking about. But, like, between the three of them, mm-hmm. like, I have a hard time going, these guys are all different enough. And we're going to be getting into like almost like um, an illustrative, like black worky, tratty kind of vibe here. We're already like the work on the page. I'm trying to keep from looking that way. But a lot of what's getting done here isn't black and gray realism. And that's what this place has been known for. I think like I, I know known <laughs> for, but like we are kind of within the times too, right? Like there's there's a big resurgence of this within, within young people. The m- more I think of it, the more I'm like, um, it's less about a particular vibe. It's more just like the size, like the scale kind of denotates the price point. And what you're more thinking of when you have artists of different levels is you got to be thinking more like price point wise as to who would get said work. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So with with any new artist coming on, this is this is always how I see it. A, they first start out not doing anything because we're going to get them to a place where they're pulling lines. They have to work on their script. We're going to get them doing fake skin. We're going to try and get them, even if they have experience, because Terry had experience, Scotty had experience. This girl's got, I think, similar experience of yeah. tattooing people yeah. she knows and so the, that the, kind of the, thing. The brutal conversation will be forget all of that. Yeah. Guess what? You get to start at ground zero and unlearn all the things. This is one of the things that like Rick and I debate on. I don't know if it's easier to deal with someone that's already done a bunch of oh. experimenting on someone or just to build them straight from nothing. It's like we were talking about, we've talked about this, but Rick and I were talking about it just last Monday. Uh, buddy from the other shop down there that got called out on that bad hand tattoo. Yep. And he's such a nice guy, but he's like a 20 year almost tattooer. And yeah. it's like, yeah, like it would be cool, but how the fuck do you get rid of 20 years of bad experience when the guy probably thinks he's doing good work? Well, the thing is he's, he's doing okay work from time to time. Yeah. And for a lot of people, okay work is fine. You know what I mean? But that's, like, that's okay. We wouldn't want to take that on. God, no. Well, and, okay. I would be fine with taking it on depending on the person because being willing to unlearn bad habits and have a, a marker that you see as like if so because I always think if somebody has a vision for themselves and it's a high level vision, their ego will be super low until they get to that high level. Right. 
because it doesn't really matter about getting really comfortable here because they see that they have to get up here. If this is their level that they're aiming at and they're there, you're never going to get them. They're never going to be teachable, right? Because just, they don't even see the upper. The idea of like with Scott leaving, like he's leaving the shop. We haven't said that on the podcast, but yeah. we may as well. Right? Yeah, there we go. Um, get it out now. Yeah. Um, the idea of having someone else come in that was the already uh, established artist is a good one. But the problem is a lot of being an established artist is learning your own habits and mm -hmm. um, being around a long time. You pack on all these bad ones and yep. and then it's like, how the hell do you get rid of them? And really, if you can't look at yourself and go, I need to fix this, then it doesn't matter if Rick tells you or anyone else tells you. Mm, it can because like if you see, so like if there's this potential of like, so you're sitting down and you see Rick do something at a certain level and you see yourself do something at a certain level and then you can physically put them up against each other. Then it's like, oh, I can see it because there's this, like one of the reasons that this shop performs well or the Kelowna shop performs well is because we have high level long-term artists. You know what I mean? Like, cause he's the biggest baddest in the shop and therefore everybody else has something to measure against within their space space it's like that carly jarlier the guy that i was talking about his yeah. shops have all these people that are all swinging it where he is and they're doing it decently like quite decently but if he wasn't there i don't know if that same um caliber would be created it's because when you have like a room full of artists and they all look great to the outside they might even look it might even look like well here's a theoretical situation let's, let's put rick you and Scott here, and we'll put you two years from now, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we'll suggest that you and Scott are almost the same. Sure. Um, and then, but you both would have some kind of reverence for Rick, mm -hmm. and the outside world might e not even get it. Mm -hmm. It's because once you're in it, you can see that those few percentage points that you have to go up mm -hmm. to get to that next level, and uh, that can take forever, right? Most people wouldn't see those those percentage points mm -hmm. though they just see a couple of cool tattoos and go these guys are all killing it i think you're assuming things that might not be true in that like one of the things that you'll notice doing the bookings is like you have two black and gray artists and people's choice of aesthetic in terms of who they're choosing really does come into play yeah so like because if rick has a very particular style when it comes to doing black and gray it's this like full saturation kind of high level of detail, time consuming, that kind of thing. And it's very like, um, photorealistic. It's not hyperbolized. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so the, the people that really like the idea of like, kind of like a picture on the skin, um, that's something that they gravitate towards. Whereas when you see like Scott's is kind of stylized in that way where it's m more like, um, it's detailed, but it's not aiming strictly at what the reference is. He's kind of embellishing, and it's of course, got this kind of like a stylistic take on yeah. things. Yeah, so that that type of thing draws a certain type of eye towards that as well, and everybody has that. So it's one of those things. The thing that catches the client's eye is usually going to dictate who they're going after, and even if it's subtly, like even if they they don't say it out loud, you'll be able to see it. Someone will send over a a reference that's just super oh yeah i know super you, I stylized know getting, realism yeah. and then all of a sudden it'll be like oh, okay well that's not a rick piece yeah you know what i mean because he won't do that yeah he's not the he doesn't have the painterly approach to it no. where it's all flair and no no he doesn't look like a section that's this big see everything that's in it and just wipe it away <laughs> yeah you know what i mean he's like no i have to do all of that as yeah. meticulously as i can possibly do it yeah where uh you give that same thing to to Lee and he's gonna he's gonna get yeah. rid of as much of it as yeah, he, he can. Yeah, he sees what he considers to be important. Right. And striking. And yeah. Well, did you see that Barry post yeah. the other day? Like, there isn't a ton of detail in no. it, but man, is there depth. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's striking as fuck. Yeah. Right? Like it, it is fierce as fuck. Yeah. But again, not not a lot into the little details. Yeah. Not that he needs them. It's just a different thing. Yeah, it really right? is. I really have always liked his black and gray, but it is, it's almost like a painted on kind of mm -hmm. uh, dramatic look. Yeah. Well, I, like, so the same thing mm -hmm. that happens with a micro tattoo, like when you do a micro tattoo, you're, you're fudging a lot of detail. And then the, the micro tattoo looks good from about here. 
once you get into it, you're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you know, there's this, 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 and this, this, that. But like when you scale it out the right de- distance, all of a sudden your eyes kind of like paint over the things that are missing, you know, what yeah. I mean? because like that's how our eyes work at a distance. So Lee's stuff is scaled to be super striking from a distance. Like, and you'll see him when he's tattooing too. It's like he'll stand up and walk away and look at it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he'll stand up and like move back five feet to look at it. There was this great incident that happened in Kelowna um, where this woman was fussing with Lee and he had about nine pictures done up for how her wrist was going to be. Yeah. And uh, she was, she kept picking one um, that he didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, she came over to me and she was like, well, which one would you take? And I'd just been watching and Lee hadn't coached me. And I went over and I, I knew exactly which ones he wanted to do. Oh, of course. And I was like, well, I really think that these would be great here because of this and this and this. Yeah. And, uh, like I could see him kind of crack at a smile and like I was doing it for him, but it was also, it was true too. Right. And not just cause it was true for him. Yeah. So like, I think someone else would have done any one of those other things okay too. Mm-hmm. But like, I knew the things that Lee would do the best yeah. in that space, and so I was just, okay, this is what you should do. And then afterwards, he's like, "You know me too well. You knew the ones <laughs> I wanted to do." And he's patting me on the back, and yeah. I'm like, "Well, it shouldn't go to that, but like, yeah, I know what will work best for those areas because yeah, I've course. looked at the shit for long enough, yeah. right?" And so that same intuition <laughs> you'll gain for everyone that comes on board here my my thing is um the amount of work that's coming in too i don't know that the notes um having four apprentice level people in here well now, again and again i know you're gonna so we'll take you out of that then you're gonna go sure. in your own way yeah but like the three um terry's doing great right now but like if you split it all up everyone's gonna be doing less work is my no intuition there nope you think that that having another artist is going to bring proportionately more people in. Mm-hmm. Does that really work? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how does that work? Um, so a lot of things, a lot of people think of it as just in terms of like, okay, well one, if, so say you have one artist and you're one shop and you have a certain amount of clients, a lot of people will look at it and go like, okay, well this certain amount of clients now all of a sudden as we get, let more artists you you get two artists now you have to divide that by two right that's not how it works each artist as they get more notoriety and more better and have a style and people know of them um they bring in their own new people that seem to resonate with them so like ali has brought in a certain clientele here yeah like it's the the and you're seeing them over and over and again and they're these people that are wanting specifically her to do a specific kind of thing that she is doing. And that is one of those things where it's like, that is true always. There are people that will only want Terry because Terry does a specific thing that they're resonating with. I just think he needs to define that more. Oh yeah, for sure he does. And like, the it'll be the same thing for me. It'll be the same thing for anybody that you bring on because each person is who the is who the client resonates with. Is there then a point where, get, like, say we had nine artists, is that still true? Um, that's what's in Kelowna. Pool, the pool of people is only so much, right? And there's, like, how many shops in this city? So part of the interesting thing of tattooing is, like, you are, you're within a shop, but you're your own business, too. Yep. Right? Of so course. You do Some develop people as a are business. better at marketing themselves than others. Yeah. So you're looking at it in terms of, like, so say someone comes in here and goes, I want a tattoo. <laughs> And I don't have a care. That's what you're concerned about. But like what I'm saying is most of people's books are going to be built with people that want that specific person. Sure. I think that's easier to get when you have someone who's been tattooing for a while, though. Yeah, but I mean, Allie's only been going a year. Mm -hmm. And she's at a place where she's... But again, this is something that I have worked at. I have pushed. And I understand the rhythm of it. And it's one of those like... Scott started as the fine line flower guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's not that anymore. Now he's doing back pieces. Yeah. Because like I, and he didn't get there because he did that. (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you. He got there because I pushed him there. Mm. Because I see the way these things scale up. It takes a long time to get from, like it took him two years to get from fine line floral guy to back piece guy. 
But he said that's where he wanted to go. See, two years is nearly not that long in it's my window. Long. <laughs> two no. years. I could fucking sleep through two years. Yeah. That's like we were in lockdowns two years ago. Yeah. Like that doesn't seem that long to me. No. Right? See, the thing that is... He hasn't even been here that long now that I think of it. No. He started 2019. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy. And, you know, there was a bunch of lockdowns in, yep. in that time period too. So it's one of those like... It's not like it's a perfect science or anything like that. I've just seen the dance enough that it, it's like, okay, it's nothing to worry about. So like Terry, whenever he defines what direction he wants to go within the next six months, will be booked up for three months. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? That, that type of thing is what you can kind of set your watch to a little bit. And then you, all of a sudden him said doing, to me once that he goes too fast. So yeah. I didn't quite see it. But now I'm in the shop with him, and I do think so. Yeah, he does. Go like he's fast. going. He's you. Are, I'm not saying take your time, like milk these people for all they're worth. But like he's working too fast. Yes, and he should almost be charging f like a flat piece rate at this he's, point. He, he's gonna move into one of one of two ways. He could go the flat piece rate, in which case he scales down the detail and just continues his pace, mm -hmm. or he stays with a with a rate. And he needs to take a half hour to 45 minutes longer per piece. Yeah, it's too fast. Yeah. It's way too quick. Because like, and he needs to figure out what that does. Because he's gobbling through appointments so quickly. Like he chugs through them so fast, it's hard to keep them full. Well, so like <laughs> the thing that he will notice more and more is when his work comes back healed, the better pieces are going to be the ones that he took his time on. Yeah. Like the skin just will have retained the ink better. The saturation, the tones will be smoother. Everything will be just better. And then, yeah, I don't know, but I'm in the same boat. Like that Fox piece could have been cleaner if I had slowed down, you know? And, and I, that's just a science thing of needles going into skin, like slowing your hand down, making sure that you don't rush. The problem that I get into is when a person is like kind of in a sensitive state and they're really making it known that they're in a sensitive state. I kind of feel like I need to speed up. Yeah. And yeah, it's one of those. You start getting pushed by the yeah. emotion of the situation. Yeah. All of a sudden the intensity turns up and that's where Rick will just stop. Another fucking thing that Rick is great though mm -hmm. is like he's so removed from people's pain. Like, pain. <laughs> yeah. It's a real superpower for him. Yeah. Because even Lee is moved by it to some degree. Yeah, of course he is. Right. Like he, he starts getting more chatty and he's, he's ramping up the drama and having like, like he tries to slight a hand you, you know, Rick's never done any of that shit. No. It's just, I'll tattoo you till your skin says so. Yeah. Right? I don't give a fuck what noise you're making. Yep. <laughs> no, exactly. Because it's indifferent. Yeah. Right? Who cares what... You could have the best skin in the world and the worst mind in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I could be the easiest to tattoo person in the world and a total bitch. Yeah. And I'm just, oh my God, this hurts. And yeah. Rick's like, yeah, your skin's good though. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? We're doing something here. <laughs> That's where he's a bit unique for that. Oh, yeah. And I, I think his clients handle it pretty well. Yeah. Because of his demeanor to it. You know what I mean? Well, Roxanne was like passed out over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> she's tough. She's very tough. You go over, she's snoozing. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's, I tattooed uh, Steph. Steph, and she was, she was asleep. Sleeping. Like, she slept for probably like, two hours. I've never slept. Tattoo. I've been really cozy. I just don't get into, like, when I'm, I want to be in it. Yeah. I don't understand the sleeping thing. Not that I'm knocking it. Yep. That's a badass move. Yeah, it is. I just, I, I don't, I feel very awake when I'm getting tattooed. Yeah, that's reasonable. I so. don't think it's a negative. Oh. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that if you have any worries about that stuff, like I wouldn't, a, um, because like the, it's a very slow progression for a uh, an apprentice. I'm in such a famine mind state from the lockdowns, where like my buddy Vince that I talk about quite often. Uh, when we went into the last lockdown, it was like, I would love to have you here, but if it comes down to you and me, I'm throwing you in front of a bus. Yeah. Every time. Well, okay, so... Every take, fucking time. Let's take yesterday, okay? <laughs> so rather than yesterday, me doing a walk-in day, say I just have a piece, okay? Just one. Terry does a piece. Allie does a piece. You know, like what she did yesterday. And then you've got another body to handle all the walk-in volume. Yeah. Because a Sunday will be a Sunday, but will be a Sunday. We could have had way more than we took. Dude, so. we're not even in the summer yet. Yeah. We're not even close. So it's one of those, like, that's the volume of a healthy shop. 
as in these guys, like the, the stable people have clientele and then everything help happens around them. So you do need someone to facilitate the small walk-in tattoos. You just do. Yep. Ali was, yeah, I never want to get into turning that away. Yeah. Well, Ali was that while I was trying to work on Terry, you know what I mean? Develop him so he could do, cause it's like you get them from small pieces to something medium, medium to something large, large to full scale projects that are take multiple sessions. And then from there, it's like you have the sky's the limit on that one. But you know, she's at a place where she's doing medium to large scale now ish four, four ish tops hours tattoos. Yeah. And the occasional larger project, he needs to get into a place where he's almost entirely larger projects. I agree. And I'll need to get to that as well. Cause like uh, I'm fine to do whatever the route is. I'm not stressed about it, but that will be better overall. And then all of a sudden, if you've got her doing medium to large, those are one to two sits. And then the occasional bigger project is like three to five and then three to five for him, three to five for me. Well, fucking 50 to him. Yeah. And (laughs) um, (laughs) never ending for it. Yeah. But like then all of a sudden it's like, what does your bookings look like? You know what I mean? And this is like, we're, we're in the process of growing people as artists and their clientele grows along with them. So I'm not concerned about it at all. We could take on another body and another resident and be fine. Hmm. I really genuinely think that if we, if we had, you know, Rick decides to move to the back, have his own space, put another resident body here and then put another apprentice in, we're fine. I really like genuinely no problem because like I've done that and then threw in a guest. It's like, oh yeah. And a guest is going to be here for four weeks. Make sure they're busy. (laughs) It's a fucking daunting thing, man. Like to have to book a guest is terrifying. Well, yeah, you don't want to waste their time. They're here for one purpose and one purpose alone. Yeah, they're not here to see the sights. No, they could care less. <laughs> I only had one of those guys, which was like, he, he, Kuba was treating this like a vacation, which was fine. And he like worked on a flash sheet for a lot of, he's, he was like, I don't really want to tattoo that much. <laughs> it's like, okay, bro, whatever. He still tattooed a lot, but it was not. Uh, less than he normally would. Less than any uh, guest would normally, yeah. Mm-hmm. The guests were always about like, what's the most amount of money I can make? in my time here. Yeah. Which I totally understand and respect. Um, but yeah, man, no, I've, I've done that dance and it's okay. When like the, the pandemic has definitely, um, fucked up the rhythm of what a tattoo shop looks like, but no, this will be good. It'll be a really good, like, um, healthy kind of vibrant shop pretty quick here. I think getting a, a new face in here would be nice for the shop, like a friendly new face. No no past pretense. I just my only concern is booking, but you keep saying that's fine, so Yep. Which I'm just going to have to take you on trust. <laughs> just the least uh <laughs> least of your worries. There's always walking days, so. No, it's like not even just walking days, it's just that there's certain types of clients. You know what I mean? And they always exist. So it's just a matter of making sure that you reach them. Mm. So that that's like the main thing is like if our social media and like our advertising and stuff like that can be good and strong, we're fine. That's like the main thing. Well, that'll be easy enough. We've been fine. I've been booking with weak advertising yeah, and, and social media. You know what I mean? Like the only month that was kind of sparse and it was just sparse for Allie was December. Yeah. It's just because it's Christmas and yeah, no that one is wants, what it is. Yeah. Everybody's saving money for yeah. Christmas shopping. But that's like the only time that it's ever been like concern. Like as soon as she started tattooing, she was making money, which is rare for apprentices. You know what I mean? Like she was doing a decent amount of money and I, it'll be the same for anyone that comes on. It's just the, as long as they can handle it, you know, that's a, that's a big thing in terms of the pressure that gets put on someone starting off tattooing. Like the first thing would be like, if this person comes on and we say, Hey, just so you know, everything you've done sucks. (laughs) What do they do to that? Like, well, hopefully you don't say it just like that. Kind of you do. (laughs) Kind of you do. That's the it's one like, thing I'm always wondering. Like, how do you politely tell someone everything they've done is shit? It's not. 
no, it's not polite. You have to see how they'll handle it, right? Yeah. Because what has to matter to them is they have to have a vision of what they want, right? So one of the one of the things that I'll say about Scott is he handled that very well. At the beginning, he definitely did. At the very beginning, did. he was yeah. just like... I remember I, that. Yeah. It was just one of those like, hey, dude, just so you know... Something happened... stuff is not okay here. Within the last six months to a year where like the ego came in pretty yeah, strong. Pretty, well, no, it's... <laughs> Honestly, I will say as soon as he started getting like um, booked over to this black and gray realism stuff and he started seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of like doing the thing that he wanted to do, he, his ego started coming in pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was a very... He started resenting tattooing things that weren't what he wanted yep. to do. And as soon as you start doing that, man, you're fucked. Sudden and stark change. Yeah. I, and even you notice it even in the way he talked. Yeah. You were like... What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did just, you just say? It's just, I understand it. It's the same pr- problem that comes into play of someone that's learning and starts to make good, comfortable money. It's like the drive and the push isn't there in the same way because there's now whatever the light at the end of the tunnel was, you've reached. So you get this comfort. And then, so he had that happen when he, all of a sudden he was starting to get black and gray pieces and then he would have to do stuff that was in the previous world and then he would resent it. And it's like, <laughs> well, hang on. You're not, you're t- not tattooing for you. Everything that you're doing is on a person. It is theirs. So as soon as you start going, I only want to do this thing I want to do. Oh, my God, man. You're fucked. Yeah. Because you're never going to win that. Those are not your tattoos. They're other people's tattoos. You are there to facilitate, yes, your artwork, but it's for them. And that's one of those, like, as soon as you start resenting people that have different ideas from what you and your vision are, you're in a tricky spot. I would think so. Because you have to be the best in the world at that point. You just yeah, have to be. If you want to be trying to pull that move. Yeah. You got to be doing 10 grand a day. Like you got to, you got to, because that's the only type you, that's the only time you can be at that level of uh, ego. Cause then your ego is a hundred percent validated. You are the best in the world. Go ahead. Live your ego's best life. Hmm. But like, as long as you're in the come up, nah, man, you got to be humble and you got to be um, on the side of the client. Can you stay in the come up forever? Yes. You think so? Yeah. Rick's mentality is that. He's learning every day. That's what he said to me over and over and over again. Learning every day. And uh, I think in an art form, I think that's probably wise. Because mastery, you're always going to be different a month from now in terms of how you tattoo. You just are. Because you're going to run into situations. You're going to have little things click. You're going to have, oh, this thing I did different. And, oh, I like this. And, oh, I don't really like that anymore. I saw that healed. And, like, as long as you're an artist and you're in an art form, I think it's, like, a practice. I don't think it's, a, like, you are just done. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's the only way you maintain that. And that's one of the things that I want to try and, like, Allie did the best thing she's done the other day. Like, that snake piece is the best thing she's done. Yeah. And that's great. Now, tomorrow, next week, a month from now, will be the next best thing that she's done. And that will always evolve. And then she'll look back at the snake piece that was the best thing that she's ever done and go, well, I could do that better today. And as long as you kind of keep yeah, that in a, mind. That girl that she did that on, I said her arm is like an evolution of your work. Yeah, legit. Because the bottom is the worst yeah. and it gets better as it goes up. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. <laughs> They're all okay, but yeah. like you can see the, the track record. Well, like her, her uh, butterflies on her wrist, like she has to go in and touch them up again because the black didn't stay in the filling areas. Yeah. And it's like, there you go. That's evolution right there. And again, that's what I'm meaning. Like your clients grow up with you. <laughs> yeah. They're um, the, the old uh, arm keeps getting better and better yeah, as you do. Yeah, exactly. You grow up. <laughs> but that's like. Again, I, I just I would encourage if you uh, if you're feeling at all nervous about bookings, man, bookings, no, don't ever get nervous. The main thing to focus on here always is high level, pushing people to be the best that they can, pushing people to take the best photos, to do the best engagement with their clients, to do the best consult, to do the best tattoo, like all of those things. If that's our mindset in terms of like doing the best, bookings are fine. Hi, Rick, with this consult yesterday. Snow Leopard. Yeah, we can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he fucks off to the yeah. back. All yeah. right, I'll book you in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Consult. Unreal. <laughs> but that's, that's all uh, he needs. That's Rick. And for him, it's more of a, 
the consultation isn't about a consultation. The consultation is about them showing a sign of commitment. Yeah. Because like, <laughs> if they're not willing to just show up for him to kind of say, yeah, whatever, we'll do it. If they're not willing to do that, then they're not willing to it's go through part the process. Of the deal. Yeah, because yep. it is a long process with Rick, and especially with a cover up and things like that. So you got to be like, <laughs> like this. He's gonna have this in J- July. That lady with her Alice in Wonderland chess piece. Like that thing's gonna need probably three consults, let alone the actual tattooing. And she's gonna be driving down from Edmonton, a six hours, and then six hours back. That's and wild. And it's gonna require a good amount of consultation because what she wants is something magazine worthy. Yeah. That's what she wants and doesn't give a shit about money. Just wants it amazing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that is what it is. That guy that's wanted to fly into New York to have Rick black out his arm for two hours. (laughs) Like it's one of those, like that's a commitment, you know? Yeah. That's a commitment. All right. And with Rick, you, that's high level commitment. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which, but how much he is committed to you, I don't really know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's not going to be in a relationship with you. No, he's in a relationship with the tattoo he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the long and short of it. The body that it's on doesn't, not at all. As, as he said the other week, if I could be tattooing corpses, oh, that'd he'd be just be fine it. by me. He'd be all about it. <laughs> yeah, it's not wrong. But yeah, man, it'll be good. We'll have plenty of work. It'll be fine. Yeah, I've seen it come and go, and uh, I'm not worried one bit. The like with me coming on board here, it's never been a worry of like having clients. It's just always been a mentality of like I need to be performing at a high level so that the clients feel okay coming to me. You know what I mean? Like that's that's all I've ever cared about because I know that they're out there. I know that they want tattooing, and I know that they want it through us and all that stuff. And so it's it's my responsibility to get good, so that they can be they can feel good coming to book with me. That's it. And then after that, it's like whatever. So as long as I keep focused on that, I've I've got no concerns about bookings ever, mm. which is a a weird sense of security 